Greetings and salutations. This is Akirishin. In this video, I will be featuring the Blum und Voss P21203 multi role fighter, a German aircraft. It is equipped with three 20 millimeter cannons with a fairly high damage per second a very good rate of fire and a very good effective firing range. This aircraft also comes with 24 RAM rockets which are effective against aircraft and they are fire, fired in a salvo manner meaning that multiple rockets fire at the same time. And we'll talk a little bit more about the rockets when we get into our uh, pilot skills. As a fighter, I have equipped this aircraft with Control Surface Adjustment 4, increasing maneuverability in turns by 3%, and Lightweight Airframe 4, increasing maneuverability in all axes by 3%. To assist us in getting more rounds on the target, I have gone with the gyroscopic gun sight, which increases firing accuracy by 10%. This aircraft um, is a high speed fighter. Uh, when you're flying it, it feels fast. Which is, which is really good. It does have a reasonable uh, boost, and I'll show you that uh, once we get into some PvP later. Uh, it has good maneuverability in rolls and turns. Uh, this is a relatively small aircraft in comparison to others, and I perceive, and I say perceive because perhaps it's just my uh, the, the feel of the aircraft, but I perceive that because it is smaller, it does turn uh, better than other similarly situated aircraft. Um, but we do have our uh, maneuverability upgrades to assist us in that department. Um, it is most effective in mid altitude uh, combat, and we'll look at the stats on that to see. In a moment to see exactly what that means uh, and we've already talked about the salvo launched rockets in terms of aircraft specifications its optimum altitude is 2,000 meters which is I would say uh, mid altitude plus uh, high altitude would be you know your 2500, 2800 uh, meter altitude aircraft. So it's it still is you know pretty good about getting up there. Uh, its optimum airspeed is 525 kilometers per hour. Uh, I can tell you that uh, you know quite often you're going a lot um, faster than that. Like I said, it just feels. Um, it feels like a very fast aircraft when you're filing, when you're uh, flying it. Ammunition wise, I have gone with the universal ammunition, which has equal parts chance of fire and chance of critical damage. Uh, you know, as I've mentioned in other videos, universal doesn't necessarily mean universal because those. Um, that breakdown of chance of fire versus critical damage varies among the universal ammunition depending upon what the aircraft is. Uh, so, for example, uh, an aircraft with you know 1,200 round per minute machine guns uh, it will tend to have a higher 
chance of fire in the universal ammunition. So, but this is a very balanced aircraft, and it has a very balanced universal ammunition breakdown. I have gone with the automatic fire extinguisher. Uh, there's no particular uh, vulnerability for this aircraft in terms of catching on fire, but you know, I tend to think it's a good idea to have that just in general. And I've gone with the first aid kit so that if our pilot gets injured, we can get our pilot back up to uh, full capacity as soon as possible. Uh, because otherwise, you, you know, our ability to put rounds on the target is greatly diminished while the pilot is injured. And I've gone with heavy-duty control services, which increases, uh, again, maneuverability in all axes for 10 seconds. So, you know, if you need that extra turning ability, if you're going up against a Japanese fighter, for example, uh, it's nice to have that to help out. All right. Um, in terms of pilot skills, I have gone with uh, aerobatics expert for increased maneuverability in all axes by 2%. So that, along with the other uh, similar upgrade that we have, gets us to 5% on that. Uh, I've also gone with aerodynamics expert because it does increase by 40% the effects of our lightweight airframe and our control surface adjustment upgrades that we um, have taken. Now I did something interesting on this uh, particular aircraft that I don't do on most of my fighters and that I have gone, I've chosen to go on with the expert rocketeer. I really like the rockets on this aircraft. First of all, they just look really cool when you fire them. Um, but, you know, a lot of times in this game, you get head-on attacks. You know, um, HG-262s uh, and, and the like, you know, coming straight at you, thinking that, you know, their cannons are just going to eat you alive. Uh, and all things equal, they probably would. Until, of course, you uh, give them a face full of rockets, which is really feels good, i got to tell you. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're going along thinking they're going to blow you into oblivion, and all of a sudden they get a face full of rockets. So I did go with the expert rocketeer skill, um, to, and, and I'm still, you know, experimenting with it to see how valuable it is. Um, but so far, I, I think it, it does its job. Um, and I've won several head-on engagements as a result of that. So it's a nice little surprise to have in your pocket. All right. Um, paint schemes. Uh, it's a little difficult to see because of this, the lighting in this particular, um, while the event's going on here. But this is uh, summer. Winter, Desert, which is probably one of my favorites for this aircraft, and Marine, which is also, I really enjoy it. I've always liked the German uh, camouflage uh, schemes on the, their planes with these small, you know, patterns of, of camo. I wish uh, some of the other aircraft, like, for example, the American aircraft, use that kind of camo system but uh, they don't <laughs> and of course as always I go with my lucky 13 on these uh, German aircraft so uh, basically just to kind of sum up this aircraft uh, it feels very fast it feels very maneuverable um, it's powerful it's got good cannons uh, you know Having the 20 millimeter cannons instead of the 30 millimeter cannons, I think is uh, really good. Uh, I think that I, for one, you know, sometimes struggle getting, you know, 30 millimeter cannons on the target, especially when I'm in a fast mover. Uh, but the 20 millimeter cannons, because of the higher rate of fire, 700 rounds per minute, uh, they're very powerful, and yet. 
you have a much greater likelihood of getting rounds on the target because of that nice rate of fire. So I think that that's a really strong point uh, to this aircraft. And and the other thing is it's it's very unique looking. I mean I when I see these you know uh, in game flying against them uh, they look like you know Batman's jet. <laughs> They're just very unique and a very interesting design. Uh, so really breaks the mold uh, with this particular aircraft. It's kind of like a flying engine, isn't it? Pretty much. Okay, so um, at this point, what we are going to do is go to World of War Planes website and look at their uh, compare aircraft feature. And we will compare this aircraft to other tier 9 multi-role fighters to see how it stacks up. Um, so if you're trying to you know, decide what line of multi-role fighters do I want to go up, uh, hopefully that can help you to uh, be able to place this aircraft uh, in context with others like it. So let's do that now. So we are here on World of Warplanes website using the compare aircraft feature. And we are now going to compare our Boom und Voss P2203 with a uh, like-minded uh, tier nine multi-role fighters. Uh, and we have Snoopy up here in our browser who seems very concerned about what we're doing. Um, so hopefully we'll do a good job here. All right, so uh, just to remind you that whenever you do this, whatever aircraft you want uh, to focus upon, in this case our P2203, uh, you want to choose it last because whatever aircraft you choose last will go in the first slot. Uh, also, you want to go into each one of these aircraft after you get in there and make sure you clicked on the upgrades so that you're uh, giving each aircraft its, uh, putting it in its best light. Okay. Uh, so what we have here first is the, uh, we're comparing against the J7W2 Shinden Kai uh, and uh, also the Lockheed F-94D Starfire. Uh, I do have the J7W2 Shinden Kai, but I do not have the Starfire. Um, but uh, looking at the gun armaments here, uh, you can see that both the uh, J7W2 and the Starfire um, outclass uh, the, from a stats perspective, the uh, P2203, um, but I think we want to look a little bit further into that situation. As you remember, we've got pretty powerful cannons on the P2203 um, with a very high rate of uh, fire for cannons, and if you compare that to the uh, J7W2, it's got uh, 30 millimeter cannons, but uh, a, a very low rate of fire. The other thing you need to know about those cannons is that they um, heat up very quickly. So you're maybe going to get three or four uh, shots out there before the cannon is overheating. Now, when they connect, um, they really hit hard. But uh, you've got to, you know, deal with the uh, overheating issue, and also, you know, at tier nine, you've got a lot of very fast-moving aircraft, and having such a low rate of fire, it's difficult to get those rounds on the target. Versus our high rate of fire, we're much more likely to make hits than is the J7W2, so you have to take that into account. Um, and then on the Starfire, it does have 20 millimeter cannons. Uh, I don't know what the rate of fire on that is. 
don't think it gives us the opportunity to see that. But let's see here, F94D. So if we let's go into a new tab here. So if we go in and take a look at the F94D, you're going to see that it's got 800 uh, damage per second, uh, which is which is huge, uh, and it's got a uh, 3,000 rate of fire. I mean that's that's huge. That's pretty huge. So. <laughs> Very powerful, very powerful. So you can kind of see why um, it's outclassing. Okay, so moving down, uh, bombs and rockets. The J7W2 does not have uh, rockets, so it only has bombs. So that is a definite disadvantage as far as I'm concerned in comparison to the P212-03. Uh, um, the Starfire uh, does have rockets, but uh, they are not uh, salvo rockets. They are for ground attack. So... Uh, you know, in terms of being able to take out other aircraft with rockets, the uh, P-212-03 is going to outclass the Starfire in that regard, certainly. Uh, survivability, um, the J-7W-2 and the F-94D uh, are indicated to have greater survivability. Now, I would say, though, that if you look at the airspeed here, the, uh, and I know that's based on hit points, okay? But that can be misleading because if you look at the airspeed here, the J7WT is, you know, significant, significantly slower than the P2203. And that does make a difference in survivability. So I would give the P2203 the survivability edge over the J7W2 because of its greater uh, airspeed and across of course for the F-94D Starfire uh, speed is life for that aircraft so um, you know it uh, definitely uses speed in survivability. Um, best speed or, or top speed at best altitude um, again the P-212-03 outclasses the J-7WT uh, too but not the F-94D Starfire. Um, so, you know, top speed at best altitude, when that aircraft is in its element, that's its top speed. Uh, average time to turn 360 degrees. So this is when you get into that um, turning, uh, dogfight. Uh, you can see that the uh, J7W2 is uh, exactly the same as the P-212-03. They're both small aircraft, so, uh, and, and I have found the J-7W-2 to be good at, you know, flipping over and things of that sort. Um, but uh, the 94D Starfire is not a maneuverable aircraft. It's um, lifeblood is speed, not maneuverability. Uh, optimum airspeed, Pretty much the same uh, breakdown. The P2203 beats out the J7W2, but not the Starfire. Optimum altitude. The um, J7W2 is a very much a mid to low uh, altitude aircraft, um, and the Starfire as well uh, is outclassed in that regard by the P2203. Uh, now here's an important statistic, rate of climb. Why is that important? Well, many times when you're climbing, you're trying to get away from something, something that's trying to kill you, you're trying to outclimb it, get above it, 
uh, to a position of advantage. And you can see both the J7W2 and the Starfire will outclimb in terms of rate of climb the uh, P2203, but they're not going to be able to outclimb in terms of uh, altitude the P2203. Always pros and cons with every aircraft, right? All right, so let's uh, take those two aircraft off our list. And we now have the um, Republic F-84B Thunderjet. Uh, I do have this aircraft um, researched and unlocked, purchased. Uh, I have flown it many times. I enjoy it. Um, but, uh, you know, gun armament wise, it is certainly outclassed by the P2203. Uh, the guns on the Thunderjet are a bit underwhelming. Um, and of course, the uh, I-211 uh, is uh, a little bit stronger than the P2203. Uh, bombs and rockets, the uh, F-84B Thunderjet, and I believe the I-211, neither of them have um, salvo rockets. They both have, uh, let's see, the. I know that the Thunderjet has air-to-ground rockets. Um, let's see, the I-211-12 has bombs, so it does not have rockets at all. So I would say in the in the in that regard, in terms of fighting other aircraft, the P2203 is going to have the advantage there um, because of the salvo rockets in part, and also its its high rate of fire cannons. Uh, but perhaps the uh, Thunderjet and the I211 are are going to do a little bit better attacking ground targets. Uh, survivability um, the Thunderjet is more survivable than the P2-1203 um, the I-211 less survivable and you can see that there in the hit points but then when you get to airspeed again you see the P2-1203 being a little bit better in that department uh, and, and of course you know speed is defensive it uh, can be defensive in nature. It can be offensive, but it can also be defensive. Top speed at best altitude. Uh, both the Thunderjet and the I-211 are outclassed by the P-2203. In terms of maneuverability, um, the P-2203, again, superior to the Thunderjet as well as the I-211. Average time to turn 360 degrees. Again, that's is your your turning fight. Thunderjet um, and the P2203 similar. Um, the I211 is outclassed by the P2203. Uh, optimum speed uh, the same for the Thunderjet and the P2203. Um, the two I211. Uh, somewhat inferior in that regard to the P2203. And then optimum altitude, again, the P2203 is a better altitude aircraft uh, than the other two we're comparing, but is once again outclassed in the rate of climb. So those aircraft are going to be able to climb faster, although not uh, higher up than the P2203. Uh, and who's to say which is better? I think there's an argument that the rate of climb is more important because, you know, many times in aircraft I've tried to outclimb an opponent only to have them sit there and chew on my tail the whole way up. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how, you know, if they're going to outclimb you and they're going to be right on your tail the whole time, you won't make it to that higher altitude. Uh, so I would say, you know, probably the um, rate of climb is sl slightly more important than the um, altitude figure. So anyway, um, hopefully that helps you put into perspective the P2-1203 with other uh, 
multi-role aircraft at tier nine and help you decide which route you want to go. Personally, I really like the P2203. It feels good. Um, it's fun to fly. I like the Salvo rockets. Um, it would be my choice among all of these aircraft that we have just reviewed. Okay, so what we are going to do now is head into a battle and let you see how this aircraft performs uh, in some PvP. So we have drawn the Alpine Gambit Snow and Ashes map. We are going to first head over to this forward airstrip, which is not a healing uh, airstrip. And then we are either going to head over to the mining Attention. plant, depending upon whether we have zone. any ground attack aircraft battle. over Good there market. working that, any enemy ground attack aircraft. Or we're going to go to the military base uh, at mid. We'll just have to play that by ear. You are approaching the front line. Off we go. This um, aircraft has a 10 second uh, engine boost, which is pretty generous. Not too bad. There are aircraft with higher boosts and there are aircraft with lower boosts. So um, I would say it's, it's a fair boost. As we start to get closer to the target, if I use my air boost, I probably won't go lower than half of it, because I want to get it back up to speed and save some of it for combat if we need it. Okay, so we do have some enemy aircraft coming in here. up some speed. Always take care of the enemy aircraft. The Reds first. And we're probably going to have somebody coming straight at us, so that's a good time to fire our, camp, our rockets see how effective those are for them to get a nice face full of rockets. Love that surprise. They're just thinking they're going to be dealing with cannons and bammo. They're like, what just happened to me? We've taken control of the airfield. Okay, so I am guessing they have maybe a ground attack aircraft over here, maybe starting to move towards the military base. So that's usually what they do, and sure enough, several. I think we're going to try to take this gentleman out because my guess is that he will try to, if we don't, he is probably going to try to head over to our airfield. Coming up from behind with one of these is a, not a bad strategy, kind of avoid some of the uh, rear gunfire. We have a lot going on here, so we're going to prioritize any low health targets, which we really don't have any, and we've got a Spitfire here. Whenever you see that Spitfire, folks, get in there, and you've got to take it out immediately. Because if you get in a quick turning fight with it, that's not going to go well. 
So if you don't kill the Spitfire right away, then turn around, or then try to get off as quickly as you can. So, I think we got him and I think he got us, or maybe somebody was on our tail there. I wasn't quite sure, but I think we got him. But yeah, anytime you, you know, if you don't kill the Spitfire, uh, move off, get some distance, and then come around, because you're not going to win a close-in air fight with a Spitfire. So don't put yourself in that position. And we've got a low health P1056 there. So let's see if we can get it. Oh, they got it. Another low health XP 58 there. Here is our human pilot. Multi roll. That must have been the aircraft that took us out when we were fighting the Spitfire. Must have snuck up behind us because we just got the Avenger accolade. We've got a ground attack aircraft working on our plant over here, so we want to go deal with that. And we'll get in low here, so maybe we can avoid some detection. It's a full health IL-10M. So we're going to try to go out this aircraft at the sides. Take care of this Engine lower there. health target You'll first. It's not easy hitting these targets with rockets. All right, let's do this other one. He looks like he moved off. He's come back. Now one thing you have to really watch out for are bombs. So a lot of these ground attack aircraft will drop a bomb knowing you're right behind them and are going to fly into the blast and it will take you out and it's an unpleasant surprise Victory having been the recipient of it and having up. delivered it a few times. A heavy storm here. Unable to proceed. So Return just be aware of that when you're you finding one of those ground attack aircraft give them the chance to take you out with an easy kill on a bomb. So we've got a couple low health targets, so we'll deal with them first as always. Short burst here. We're in control of all plans. It's half the battle. And we'll head up here a little bit to the nosebleed section, see if we can't deal with these two aircraft. Although we need to uh, definitely pay attention to our ground attack aircraft, we still have an IL 10. I'm proud of you, pilot. And Head back home. there we go. That's it. Victory! Yay! Okay, uh, so over 11,000 combat points, which is very nice. Rank 1, uh, and uh, very good um, result here on the grade. So let's head...
back to the hangar and check out our after action report. So you really got to see there uh, some of the benefits of the rockets. Um, you know, the upgrade on the uh, or the uh, pilot skill to increase the chances of hitting enemy aircraft. Still on the fence about whether that's useful or not, but um, for now I'm, I'm going with it because I do want to try to use the rockets more, but, but just be aware that, you know, if you're missing with the rockets, it's not just you. It, it, it is difficult to hit things with them. Okay, so 11 aerial targets destroyed. Very nice. Uh, over 4,000 in damaged aerial targets. So a very good result for this aircraft. Really demonstrated its ability, I think. And I'm glad we got the opportunity to show you how effective the rockets can be. And we had, let's see, one, two, three human pilots on each team here. So yeah, good um, good match there. And I hope that you have uh, really enjoyed this video. Uh, I want to let you all know that I tremendously appreciate uh, your viewership, uh, your subscriptions, and your thumbs up. Um, that really lets me know that you got something out of the videos and um, I hope that if you get an opportunity to fly this aircraft that uh, you'll have great success in it. <laughs>